Stepper Motor Basics. This is a short video to supplement our Nate Core Essentials study guide to help explain stepper motors just a little bit better. So let's get going. All right, this is our first diagram that you see in our Nate study guide, and this depicts a stepper motor. There's some differences between our regular induction motors and stepper motors. Um, stepper motors are DC motors and they have distinct poles. This one happens to have four poles and the DC current is applied through the windings of each pole. So depending on which way the current is applied, it's going to either energize a pole south or negative or it can energize it north or positive. We're going to refer to those as north as positive, south as negative. It's a little bit easier. Um, so this picture depicts a, it's trying to depict motion and what it shows is that this pole is energized in the, in the negative polarity and this pole in the positive polarity, this pole in the positive polarity, and this pole is in the positive polarity. Now the stator has a, a positive and a negative pole. So like charges repel and un, un, like charges attract. So what happens is when this is pole is energized in the positive polarity, it's, it's repelling the rotor. Now the rotor can either go clockwise or counterclockwise, but if it tries to go clockwise, we still have, we have this other pole repelling it as well. So it has no option other than the turn in the counterclockwise direction. And it's, a, it's repelled by the positive poles and attracted by the negative poles. What happens is it's energized, the um, stepper motor is energized, and this rotor is going to turn 90 degrees it's going to stop in this position right here and it's going to stay there until the controller of the stepper motor activates or changes the polarity of each one of these poles now each stepper motor has its own controller and that controller is um, unique to each application what we'll see a little bit later on is how we can um, use this in an HVAC configuration and with some very simple steps. But let's take a look at how this is going to step. Okay, so this depicts um, the controller which would be um, activating each pole in the positive and negative polarity pulling that rotor around in a clockwise direction. Now if the controller wanted it to stop, which it normally would. It would it would just freeze the sequence, and whatever sequence it was stopped in, the um, the rotor would also stop. We don't use normally use stepper motors as a driver for a fan blade or a fan motor. It's used as a an an actuator to um, actuate usually dampers in a zoning system. So in this instance you could have um, a damper that you could open and close with the stepper motor or we could rotate it around if you'd like. Now the next diagram we have shows where we have two of our poles in the negative polarity and two of the poles in the positive polarity. Now we have the ability to stop this rotor 45 degrees in between each pole. So we can have a four pole motor and stop this rotor and rotate it so that it st stops in between the poles. So let's take a look and see what that looks like. So here, there we have it, rotating around, stopping in between the poles. And to take that one step further, if you had the right controller with a four pole motor you could stop that rotor in any of the eight positions that you see here. The other thing to note is depending on the sequence it can rotate in opposite direction. It can it can start up here at the um, 
12 o'clock position up here and stop and rotate clockwise and stop down here or rotate down in this direction and stop anywhere you want it to stop. Now here is a more complex stepper motor. It has eight poles and instead of just having a, a single rotor it has the poles have distinct and the stator has distinct teeth and so does the rotor have distinct teeth and with a more high-tech controller we can have the controller for example put 75 percent of the current in on that coil 25 percent of the current on this coil and however much it needs on these coils and stop the rotor in tiny tiny increments depending on how the teeth line up and how the controller goes so you can have an eight stator winding stepper motor with 50 stator teeth 48 rotor teeth and you can get 200 different positions that this motor can rotate and step to. So I hope that explains a little more how stepper motors work. Um, if you have any questions, email me at ron at hvactrainingsolutions.net or um, go ahead and post a question on the Nate Student Group Forum. Thanks very much.